Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper. Right now, if you saw from the opening clips, uh, I got a snake on my hands. It's a copperhead right here. It's one of the venomous North American pit vipers. And I'm not sure if you've ever heard this before, but there are people who claim if you cut off their tail, they'll die. So with a pair of scissors on my hands, there's a very scientific way to test that hypothesis. Thankfully, I don't have to test that hypothesis. And actually cutting off the snake's tail and causing it to die is a joke that some people tell. When they tell that joke, um, they say that, you know, the tail starts right behind the head and they make that joke because it doesn't have any arms or legs. Of course, that's not actually where the tail starts. The tail actually starts after their vent, which is where they uh, poop, pee, reproduce, give live birth through. So if you ever find snake eggs, they're not going to be from one of the North American pit vipers because uh, the North American pit vipers, like your rattlesnakes, copperheads here, and cottonmouths give live birth. This one has had somewhat of a rough life, and I know that because it's actually missing its tail. So I don't need to scientifically, you know, snip its tail off, see if it dies, because this one is evidence that cutting off a snake's tail does not cause it to die. Let's get a closer look. You can see here, its vent is about one inch away from where the tail has been lost. So if you see right here, there's actually a little scab coming out of that vent too. I'm um, not sure how long ago this happened, but it did provide a little bit of harm to this snake besides just losing its tail. Hopefully it can still breed, reproduce. I don't think it's having issues going to the bathroom, but from right there, look at it just has barely a tail. Obviously this happened a while ago because it's healed over, but yeah, tail cut off, snake still alive. This snake does not have much of a tail. It's got about an inch of a tail at most. Let me see if that'll focus for you. I might have to put it back on this rock and take a peek, but the tail is just the end of the snake. There's really nothing too um, vital for its life there. It doesn't have internal organs there. So as this one has proven through whatever rough life it's been through, a snake can live without its tail. Let's see if I can get a better look at this. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, okay? Just hold on. Yeah, I know. So here you can see that snake from the other direction, but right there, that dark spot is its vent. And you can see it's only got about an inch of tail after that. Come here, I should have picked a bigger rock. So, and if you'll notice too, you probably can't see it here, but the North American pit vipers, after their vent on their tail, they actually still have single belly scales. The non-venomous snakes around here have split scales. So on its belly, it's got single scales all the way across. And then after the vent, it still does. The non-venomous ones turn into two or split scales after the vent. Let's see if this quick. Eh, he doesn't like that. And I'm filming with one hand, which only gives me one hand to work with here. But the snake's tail was probably at least that much longer. The um, North American pit vipers are generally wider bodied snakes than a lot of the non-venomous ones and um, not quite as long. But in case you were ever wondering, cutting off a snake's tail does not cause it to die. Um, they're talking about cutting off its head. It's basically just a joke. And um, as always, the best place for snakes to be is in the wild. If I left this snake alone, 
there would really be very little opportunity for me to get bit by it because they generally only bite people when people accidentally step near them or on them or when you're trying to catch it and kill it. So if you want to have two-thirds of your chances of getting bit by a venomous snake removed from existence, um, then don't try to kill them or catch them. And then the only way you'll get that is if you accidentally step on or near one. Because obviously, very nice ambush predator blends in really well with the uh, native terrain around here with the leaves and the rocks and the ground, so. If you want, I've got a number of other snake videos. I'll link a playlist, I'll put it up over here. And i uh, got some good ones on identifying some of the venomous species around here too. So if you're ever wondering if the snake that you're gonna encounter is a venomous one, it's good to know. There's just a couple of venomous ones kind of across the United States that we have to worry about. Um, besides the coral snake, you're gonna have the North American pit vipers that you really have to worry about, which is your rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, and copperheads. And if you know what they look like, then every other indigenous snake really isn't going to pose the same potential venomous threat that these guys would. I'll see you next time. Papa out. Don't cut their tails off.